Ever since I started getting into group shooting and shooting on paper a little more, I started caring more about uh, bipods, actually. In the past, I've had Magpul bipods, I've had, you know, like a Harris and some clones and different things like that. Recently, I've started to notice that it does make a big difference. Shooting from the prone, shooting from the bench, shooting from grass, shooting from like cement surfaces, I started to care more about what I was shooting off of as well as what was supporting my rifle. And so on the far left there, you see a relatively new bipod to me. I'm still under a thousand rounds with it. And that is the UTG Overbore bipod. Now I'll tell you that this bipod is like super, super overbuilt. It feels very tanky. It's extremely heavy. I think it's probably either the heaviest or second heaviest bipod that I personally own. And that makes sense for an overbore. Uh, they tend to be a little bit heavy. And this particular one, is in the $150 price range, somewhere around there, 150 to 175, you might see it. And for UTG, it's a little bit more expensive, but also for UTG, this is really well built and it has some features that you're not gonna find on most UTG bipods, uh, especially the fact that it has a quick detach on the spigot mount there. So that's really cool. Uh, if you see, it also has this right here, automatic returning feet. So to install one of the feature sets here, is this brick that you're going to install on Picatinny. And so I'm just doing it on AR because I figure a lot of people will want to try this on their AR. And you know what? I just suck at shooting AR sometimes for groups. I need every bit of help I can get. And so this seemed like a really good first starter you know, location. Uh, let's see what it could do if it did help tighten up my groups at all. So I installed it on the top of my Picatinny rail there. Got her tightened down. Doesn't have to be Hulk tight, guys, just fairly tight. And then I started taking some shots and I did have some opinions after even a single first range day, which is when I recorded the, the footage here for this video. So I noticed it's really cool to be able to detach and attach this bipod quickly and it just goes right on top. And then I started testing out the locking feature there and how much cant or pan I had. And you can kind of see this is how I'm using it here. So there's your cant and I'll show you a little bit of pan in a second, but just trying to show you the extremes of how far you can actually cant the rifle quite a bit, maybe more than a lot of other bipods actually. And it does seem to use gravity to its advantage to kind of center up, especially when it's loose. When it's loose, it's very easy to allow gravity to pull it right into center. But I'll tell you something, when it's like that, you can kind of see it there, it actually moves the legs a little bit. It does rotate just a little bit, unless you're on a very firm surface or something that grabs. When it's loose, you know, I probably wouldn't shoot the rifle like that a whole lot unless I was hunting or something uh, to that effect. I know that Kyle Broderick over on uh, The Social Regressive, he always beats me to content and, and to products and he beat me to this video for sure. I don't think he even knew it was a competition. I just wanted to get out there first because I thought, man, I'm like the only person who's got this product. So few people have talked about it. And of course he comes out with a video and it's a great video. Guys, go check out Kyle's channel. The Social uh, Regressive is what it's called and it's a fantastic channel. I like to watch him a lot. One thing I noticed, particular with an AR, is you can see there's a clearance issue there. I should have brought a 20 rounder out but no problem, I can go ahead and extend the legs. And actually, even with the extension there, it's pretty solid and it goes quite a bit taller. In fact, this bipod is really a tall bipod. It's pretty tall, I'll talk more about that in a second. But I just wanna show you that you definitely can get the clearance you need. I found I had to have the legs out just a few clicks more if I'm gonna run a 30 rounder with an AR. Again, I know a lot of guys, this is probably in the price point where they're like, man, I'll just throw that on my AR and it's detach and it's it's convenient cool for hunting or maybe prairie dog hunting since it has both pan and tilt uh, I know that's something that Kyle brought up in his video and I'll just show you here and get a little better idea of just how tall this thing can get this is extremely tall and to my surprise it's really stable guys it's a very broad stance it's very wide that's one thing that I wanted you know, I was uh, uh, at a comp a while ago and I was just looking over this guy's SkyPod, like his Gen 2 SkyPod. And the thing is a beast. It's huge. It's got a really wide, wide, broad stance. And you can get so stable with it, but you can also get extremely tall with it. And this one, it's not exactly like the SkyPod. It's not trying to be a $600 bipod, but it is really well built and it is very, very stable. And actually just here on my 22, my Precision 22, I found it to be really impressive. The group that I shot was not bad at all. 
down there at 100 off of it fully extended, not even being fully supported. And I'm trying to show you there, there is some flex and even with it locked up, I have it, you know, quite a bit of tension there. It's It's got a little flex. When I loosen it up, I'll loosen it up all the way here. When I loosen it up all the way, yeah, there's lots of movement and a little more flex in there. One thing that people are going to be interested in is can you shoot it from this position right here with the legs forward? And yeah, the legs will go in a couple different directions. I'll show you that you can go back to the standard position here by pressing that gigantic button. It clicks into place. The detents are really nice. But uh, I didn't prefer it in the other position. I preferred shooting it like this as opposed to shooting it with the legs forward. I found that this was just much more stable in this position that you're seeing right here. Um, but with the feet, I wanted to just try all positions, so I did. And this is a rifle that I've got thousands of rounds on. This is my Savage 12FE in 223, and I just know this rifle like the back of my hand. I never have a bad day shooting it. It seems like it always shoots, you know, somewhere around half-minute groups at 100 yards anyways. So I figured this is my chance to test it and see if I have a point of impact uh, change as well as a group size change. So I always do five-shot groups. And I just know how this rifle performs. Like I said, I don't have issues with it. I usually use pretty good match ammo, and I, I just know what to expect. And here's the truth. I found that when I extended the legs forward like that, and there's there's no extra inches in there. It's, it's just canted forward on those legs from the underneath position. It's not the same as running it as the overbore um, position. It, it did actually open up my groups a little bit to an inch. So I would say it nearly doubled the size of my group. I think I got a lot more hop and vibration going on in there. So I really didn't prefer this position right here with the legs forward. Could you do it? Absolutely. But again, I'm shooting from a chassis. It's a very solid lockup. There's no problem with the hardware. There's no problem with the chassis or the Picatinny. It just seemed to change the balance or something to that effect of the rifle. And so I don't love this position, but if you're just going to use this bipod in the up and down position, I actually think it's really, really good. And I want to save the rest of my conversation for comparing it to the UUQ bipod, which I already reviewed, and the Atlas. So stay tuned.